A very good morning to you. Welcome to my thought for the day. Sometimes you know there's a depth to the verses that we read, which we can only really understand if we understand the context in which they were written. And this is true of uh, quite a lot of the references in the New Testament to suffering. Uh, I don't know what you think when Paul says things like, I consider the suffering of this present time are not worthy comparing with the glory that is revealed to us. That's Romans 8, 18. I don't know what you think of as the sufferings. Um, I think many people think it's the stresses and strains of normal life and perhaps even the sicknesses we have to live with and the ageing process, the slowing down, all those irritating things that happen to us as we get older. But I don't think he's talking about that at all. When he's talking about sufferings, in this context he's writing to the Romans. The Romans that he wrote to were living in the capital city of the Roman Empire. And increasingly, the more Christianity spread across the empire and um, came up against the traditional worship of the Romans, of their gods, and the fact that they thought of their emperor as a god and worshipped him as a god, um, it challenged all their concepts about beliefs and what you did for the gods and how you lived your life and the traditional things they always did. And as a result, there was a lot of persecution, a lot of suffering physically for the faith um, in all sorts of ways. But... Um, as we know, Paul and Peter and all but uh, John the Apostle who wrote 1, 2 and 3 John and Revelation and the Gospel of John, all but all of them, apart from Judas and uh, Judas Iscariot and John, the writer of Revelation, they, the rest of them, they all died as martyrs. And John was exiled to the Isle of Patmos. So he suffered exile, but he wasn't killed. He wasn't executed. But the others all were in different parts of the empire, not all in Rome. And Paul here is writing to the Romans, the Romans who were suffering persecution if they were known to be Christians. And as Christians, they stood out. They stood out because they were very different to the culture in which they lived. When they came to faith, they changed. They, they, did, they stopped going to different various places. They stopped attending. Well, they, they stopped. They changed. They changed completely. And you couldn't hide that you were a Christian. In fact, we know that many Christians lived in what are called the catacombs underneath Rome. So if you, if you have a Bible that has... Uh, a little introduction at the beginning of each book. It's well worth spending a few minutes if you don't know the circumstances under which a letter was written. Um, it's worth reading uh, and seeing where it was written from, what Paul was experiencing at the time. Was he in prison? Because he was in prison. Was he the other side of the Roman Empire? Or was where was he when he wrote this letter? Well, we know he wasn't in Rome because he wrote this to the Romans. Um, but he wrote to them, and, and it, uh, these little um, explanations at the beginning of the letters will tell you the circumstances, as far as we know it, of the people to whom he was writing, what kind of city it was, and what when he had come, and or some, sometimes he wrote to places that he hadn't visited. It's very interesting, and it, it enlightens us, because... Here he is writing and he's written about the suffering that they were experiencing, that it wasn't worth comparing to the glory that was waiting for them in the presence of God in heaven and that they had come into as they came into faith. He was reassuring them that even if the worst came to the worst and they were executed for the kingdom of God, they, the glory they would go to would be far greater than anything they'd ever experienced here. And in, in Romans 8... He finishes up um, 
saying that um, in all these circumstances, uh, verse 37, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. They conquered through love. They didn't survive to live another day sometimes, but they conquered the very way that they died, spoke of Jesus. And uh, uh, many people were shocked by their behaviour. You can read about it if you read the history books. But here we are. Verse 38 of chapter 8 says, For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that's something to take on board. Whatever is going on in your life, whatever you're experiencing, whatever difficulties, whatever suffering, Whatever challenges are ahead of you, today, perhaps today, nothing, no powers, not even principalities, not even the heavenly enemies that we stand against and that we fight every day, none of these things, not even death, can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We are his and he will take us through death, if death is the path we will walk, and one day we will walk that path. He will take us through that. It, death cannot separate us from the love of God, because death has been defeated. Death is not what it was before Jesus died and broke its power and rose again. All these things, nothing, not even the most powerful enemy force can keep us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The expression of God's love in what Jesus did for us should prove with all finality how much God loves us. Look at the extent to which God went to demonstrate his love for us. Nothing comes close to that. And we can have confidence that nothing can separate us from his love. Nothing that's going to come across our path today will keep us from the protection and the love and care of God. What a wonderful thought for the day. Have a great day. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.